That's for like if a person comes on. So, okay. So I think what we want. Shalom, my little friends. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's see. No. So we just want. That's. What, why has it got that little icon right there? Oh, here you go. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> it's okay. I don't think. Oh, wait. I was going to see. All right. Shalom, my little friends. Uh, this evening, we are going to, I think we're live here. I'm going to check this out real quick. Make sure all is well. Most of us do this anyway. Uh, um, oh, so uh, we've been getting into the law. And uh, maritime at water sea law, and then the law of the land. Okay, we are. It says right. Okay, oh. we are. Okay, <laughs> I had to make sure that yeah. we're alive. Right on. Okay. So Jason has some things to present because um, when we get pulled over by policy enforcers because um, they are not police officers, uh, we will uh, hand them this piece of paper. Uh, and then we've learned uh, um, some things in these past few days as well uh, to, to reinforce, you know, to make it a whole lot better um, out of our rights. All right. Well, let's start. Let's start with this. Let's start with, um, you know, there's only two kingdoms. There's the kingdom of heaven and there's the kingdom of man or the kingdom of Satan. Okay. And that's it. All, all this other stuff um, with, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, the United uh, or the U S United States, Canada, um, uh, Europe, all these places, all, all these things are an illusion. Um, they're, they're only, it's an illu illusion of, of separation when in, in reality, all, all of these things are combined. The, the, almost the entire world is combined, um, you know, minus, I think it was what, like f maybe four, mm. maybe four, uh, uh, places like Syria. Oh, it was three. And it was only three. It was only three. It was only three. <laughs> three. Yeah. Yeah. Syria, Iran, and, uh. And some, some, I don't remember the other one. I can't remember the other one either. But, um, but the thing is, is that, is that, you know, um, the whole world is run by what's called the UCC or the Uniform Commercial Code. Uh, I see we have like one viewer. By the way, um, any questions that you might have like during this, like feel free and, and we'll, uh, to ask them and we'll, we'll try to, uh, answer answer them to the best of our ability, but um, the thing is, is that is that this entire government is run on illusion. Okay, um, we have the illusion of the right and the left, right? Um, and uh, and and they're not. Hey, hey, Mary. Um, and and they're they're not really separate. They're two wings of the same bird. The reason that um, you have Republicans and Democrats is basically um, to, to give you the illusion of choice, that you're making a, a choice that you get to vote uh, on these folks and vote them into office, when in reality, you don't vote anybody into office. Nobody, um, um, nobody gets into office that they don't, they, the controllers, don't want to get into office. Um, Pretty much the, the whole world is run by the Vatican. Excuse me. Um, and uh, the whole the whole world is run by the Vatican. Um, it's all a satanic cult. Um, and all the, all, they're all here to take away your rights, but they're doing it through lies, through um, deception, um, through the color of law is, is, how, they're, is how they're doing this. Um, and so to give you an example of how much of a farce it is. So like, so like statutory law is color of law. You want to go to your paper? Um, oh, the Thompson versus Smith. Uh, uh, no, I was just going to, uh, if you want to pull up uh, that, that one with the color of law on it. No, 
the uh no, I'm talking about remember we had the Black's Law dictionary? Oh, oh, what is color? Uh, color right. Um, so right here, um, I hope we're sharing this. Um, so it says, uh, so this is the Black's Law Dictionary. This is edition two. I like edition four because um, it kind of gives it to you in more like plain English, um, you know, what the what the definitions of these terms are and stuff like that. So, um, so I guess the reason I'm going through this is because I'm going to present um, you know, uh, to you, what I, what I give to, to, uh, uh, the policy enforcers. Um, and so it's better if I just kind of like define some of the terms really quick. So the color of law, what is color? It's an appearance, symbolist, or, uh, sim simul, they always like to throw these words in simulacrum, lacrum, simulacrum. <laughs> I think I'm saying that right. As distinguished from which is real. OK, so right there, it's it's telling you that um, that it's not real, that the color of law isn't real. So statutory law is not real. It's not what we call common law. Common law um, only has to do with three things. There's only three things that I can do in common law um, that's actually unlawful or, say, criminal. And that is um, I can't I can't hurt harm you. Uh, another person, I can't, um, I can't harm your property, and I can't impede on your liberties, and that's it. That that's the only law that we're supposed to be under. That's called natural law. It's um, it's our father's law, right? Um, do unto your neighbor as, as you would have them do unto you. Um, love thy neighbor, right? So you're not loving thy neighbor if you're hurting thy neighbor or. Uh, if you're if you're uh, um, st stealing from them or, or breaking their property, you know you're not loving your neighbor, right? And that and that's common law, and that and that's what we should be under. Um, but unfortunately, we're not. Um, we were sold into slavery um, by our unfortunately by our parents who didn't know any better. Um, they uh, when we were born, they they signed that uh, the um, birth certificate. And basically, uh, when when they signed that birth certificate, what they did was they handed uh, they handed ones over to the state. So they handed their little ones over to the state, and now um, now they're 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 just in charge of them, and that's it. But the state actually owns owns them, uh, owns us, right? Um, and so you know, it's important to to know that about yourself, um, you know, because uh, you know the thing is 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 um and then uh, and, oh and then when you got when you got old enough um well then then you became uh, a commodity right well actually you were a commodity when when you were born but then when you got old enough you got a social security number and and so now you're operating in commerce right and and you became uh basically you became the assurity to the debt right and what is the debt it's well it's the national debt that we see increasing exponentially uh, every day, all day, um, and um, and so as an assurity to the debt, what they've done was they've made ones, um, me and you, um, they've made ones a um, basically a uh, uh, an employee of the government. Okay, and so and that's why, like you know, when you get your bills in the mail, um, you'll notice that on your bills that your um, your, your name is all in capital letters. It's all in large, bold print, capital letters. Well, uh, capital, uh, a name all in capital letters signifies a corporation. So what they've done is they've made you a corporation, okay? And, um, or, or your straw man. And, and as a result of that, um, you know, you're, you're subject to the penalties and fines uh, to, you um, uh, compelled performance, right? Um, to, 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 to do what? To, to pay against the, uh, the bankruptcy, right? Of the United States corporation, uh, to pay the debt, right? Um, but, and so in doing so, what they've done is that they're, they're enslaving us, right? Um, but, uh, they, they've, they've only created a debt entity, right? Because a corporation, corp, corpse, corporation is a dead entity. It's not a real living being, 
Okay, so it's a it's a false you. Uh, a real good uh, uh, analogy of that mm -hmm. is uh, Puff the Magic Dragon, mm -hmm. right? Like if you ever watch Puff the Magic Dragon, uh, well, he's got little Jackie Paper, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and and what he does is is uh, he takes he tells Jackie Paper he says I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna take the the uh, the essential life force from you, and I'm gonna blow it into this paper. And, and make you real and and, and it's it's nuts man it's totally nuts but and they're they, you know they're telling you straight up but okay so what i'd like to do is that I, i'm just going to give you a, a, a real quick example <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> or a um a real basic example of uh how ridiculous the system is and um you know how 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 in your face it is. So uh, by using their own uh, U.S. codes, uh, their own words, um, and uh, and you'll see that that this is a, a complete fiction that we're living in. Um, so uh, we're gonna Ashley's gonna pull up my. Uh, where'd it go? There it is. I don't know. Well, it's not sharing it. Um, so hold on. I have to. All right. I have to maneuver some things here. All right. Um, so basically, we're going to show you, um, you know, how simply even the act of uh, traveling in your vehicle, how, uh, well, we don't want to call it a vehicle. You want to call it an automobile or, um, or a, a, a motor vehicle. You can call it a motor vehicle, too. Um, and, uh, and we're going to show you how, how something, there we go. We got it. Hold on. I don't know. I don't know if we All right, check, check on the. <laughs> Man, let me look here. Yeah, Boom. No we work. got it. Okay. Yes. We got it. Yay. Jesus. You did a fine job. You did a fine Thank job. Okay. So this is, uh, this is what I keep in the, in the, in the uh, motor vehicle or automobile with me. And this is my private conveyance uh, automobile. Okay. I don't have uh, a license plate on it. It's not registered. Um, and uh, I don't have a driver's license. Um, and these are the reasons why. Okay, so we're gonna look at Thompson versus Smith right now. And it says, the right of a citizen to travel upon public highways and to transport his property therein by horse-drawn carriage, wagon, or automobile is not a mere privilege which may be permitted or prohibited at will, but a common right which he has under his right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Can you find my water? Mm -hmm. Under this constitutional guarantee, one may therefore, under normal conditions, travel at his in inclination along the public highways or in public places, and while conducting himself in an orderly and decent manner, neither interfering with nor disturbing another's rights, he will be protected not only in his person, but in his safe conduct. And then, um, <clears throat> so that was Thompson versus Smith. Uh, that is the United States Supreme Court, and what they do is they'll, um, they'll, you know, they'll make it. Once a ruling happens in the Supreme Court, uh, well, they make it law, and so then this is the law: American jurisprudence, constitutional law, section three twenty nine, page eleven thirty five. Okay, so now we have that. Now, what I want to show you: we just talked about color earlier, right? And we talked about how color is something that appears to be real, but is not, okay? So 18 U.S. Code 242 says, it's a crime for a person acting under color of any law to willfully deprive a person of a right or privilege protected by the Constitution of Laws of the United States. And we just showed you that this is American Jews Prudence constitutional law. So this Thompson versus Smith ruling is a constitutional law and you have the right. It's not a privilege that can be permitted or prohibited, but it is, it is a right to your right to life, liberty and pursuit of happiness. Okay. So, and then here's this one I really enjoy. This one is 18 U.S. Code 241. It says, if two or more persons conspire to injure, oppress, threaten or intimidate any person in any state, territory, commonwealth, possession, or district um, 
I thought it said, didn't it say in disguise? Oh, no, that comes later. Oh, my bad. Uh, <laughs> my bad. Um, a possession or district in the free exercise of enjoyment of any right or privilege secured to him by the Constitution of Laws. Uh, secured to him. Uh, uh, where, where is it? I lost it. Uh, uh, enjoyment, any privilege, uh, constitutional laws of the United States, or because of his having so exercised the same, or if two or more persons go in disguise on the highway or on the premises of another with intent to prevent or hinder his free exercise or enjoyment of any right or privilege to sec so secured, they shall be fined under this title or in prison, not more than 10 years or both. And if death results from the acts committed in violation of this section, or if such acts include kidnapping or an attempt to kidnap, aggravated sexual abuse, or an attempt to commit aggravated sexual abuse, or an attempt to kill, they shall be fined under this title or imprisoned for any term of uh, years or for life or both, or may be sentenced to death. Okay, so... Um, let's go over this just a little real quick because there's a lot of things involved here. And I guarantee you that um, these ones that are getting killed um, by policy enforcers um, out on the highways uh, have no idea about 18 USC 241. Because why? Because their lawyers are, are paid for, bought and paid for um, soliciting themselves to the Babylonian system. They have to go and they have to take the bar exam. But the thing that you don't, ones don't typically know about the bar exam is that it is the temple bar exam because all of, all of this world is run by religion, whether ones know it or not, it's run by religion, not the belief in, in uh, Yeshua, um, not not the belief in uh, our Father in heaven who, who promised to protect us and to feed us and to clothe us. Not not the Lord that uh, that that is love and is truth, but their Lord, their Lord Satan. Okay, and that's who they all pay homage to. Even the guys in the bar association when they take that temple bar the temple bar exam out of London. So it's not even a, a bar exam. Uh, of, of America. It's a bar exam of London, which should tell you who we're actually ruled by, um, which is really interesting. But anyways, getting back to this, um, I want to get to this part here where it says, if two or more persons go in disguise. Now that, sound, that's like an, uh, that sounds like an odd thing, right? It sounds, it sounds weird. Two or more persons go in disguise, you know, but you have to understand that a policy enforcer is in disguise, right? Because, um, you know, say his name is Jones, right? His last name is Jones. So Officer Jones isn't his name. His name isn't Officer Jones. It, it's probably Michael uh, Henry Jones, you know, and it, but it's not Officer Jones. And his name is written in dog, la in dog English on his chest, Right. He's got he's got it's all in capital letters. Mm -hmm. So he's signifying that he is the corporation. He is the Officer Jones Corporation. And he works under the umbrella of well, in our in our state, we're in Tennessee. So he's working under the umbrella of the Tennessee Corporation. He is an agent of that corporation. OK, so when it says if two or more persons go in disguise, they are talking about about policy enforcers, about cops. OK, that's who they're talking about. And the other thing, too, that, you know, to keep in mind is, um, you know, uh, it talks about here, it talks about uh, kidnapping. Well, if if I if I get pulled over. Right. And, and there was no, you know, no probable cause or no RAS, uh, reasonable, articulable 
um, suspicion. Thank you. Um, you know, if there's no wrath, well, while he's committing crimes all over the place, he's violating my rights all over the place. And if he decides that he's going to pull me out of the car, put me in handcuffs and take me down to the jail, what he just did was he just kidnapped me. He kidnapped me from my private property. Show me the corpus delecta. Right. Right, right. Where's the crime is what Ashley's saying. The corpus delecti means the dead man or the injured party. Show me the injured party. Where, what crime have I committed for you to do what you're doing to me right now? Okay. Um, and, and then Murdoch versus Penn, the right to exercise a, lib a liberty cannot be converted into a crime. Okay. Right there. It says it cannot be converted into a crime. All right. So then, um, you know, and, and here's the thing, I want to make something clear is that, you know, um, it doesn't, um, the chances of a policy enforcer or uh, uh, also, uh, uh, you know, another, another thing is um, uh, order follower, right? Because that's what they are, they're order followers. Um, uh, the chances of one actually reading this paper or actually uh honoring it are somewhat slim you know but but here's the thing we can we can make it not so slim how you know when you get pulled over you know start praying immediately right. and and ask the lord to shut the mouths of the lions mm -hmm. to remind the enemy that you are the head and not the tail um to uh you know to um uh um you know, to ask, ask the Lord for the peace that surpasses understanding so that you can deal with these men in honor. Because just, just because you know stuff, you know, if you start studying this stuff and getting into this stuff and you're getting really confident, you know, as to who you are and what kingdom you're in and, and uh, what, you know, what kingdom you're reside, you know, you're, you're being put in slavery in, you know, once you start understanding all these things, you know, it, it's very um, uh, easy to fall into a place of, you know, well, I have knowledge, I have power right. and and to fight and you don't want to fight. You want to stay in honor. Remember Paul with Felix. Remember Paul with um, uh, um, oh, shoot, uh, Agrippa, King Agrippa. You know, he was always in honor. You know, Paul knew, Paul knew that these people were heathens. Paul knew that, 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 that even then that all these laws and, and rules and statutes and everything that they had then, because it's all the same, nothing ever changes. It's always the same. Paul knew that these people were fictitious and they weren't real either. Um, and that they really had no authority over him. However, he remained humble and he remained honorable. And they really don't know what to do with that. They, no, they really uh, they, don't. They don't. Um, you know, Jason's had some interactions on his own uh, and, and he did it in honor. Uh, you know, he very calmly letting them know I'm, I do not consent and, you know, these things. Uh, and then Jason and I had an interaction with them uh, <coughs> together. Uh, and both of us, uh, I watched Jason myself. I watched him from a distance before they came up on me. Uh, and I watched him say to the office, uh, the policy enforcer, why are you so angry? Why are you getting so angry right now? And I watched that. Po I mean, like literally they had him patting him down had his arms up in the air, yelling at him. And Jason's like, why are you so angry? He was so calm about it. And, the, and I watched that policy enforcer calm down. Like, calm down. And from then on, you know, they come up on me. And they seen that I wasn't angry. They seen that I was very calm about things. And and, and they tried to, to, to make me uh, admit things that I, I, I was not. And uh, they they uh, ended up calming down. Because, and, but, but then they don't know what to do with you. You know, there's certain times Jason has come up against them. Um, and, or they've come up against him, not him come up against them. And um, uh, they they just really don't. Uh, they want to get mad and angry, and they probably do, but uh, they they can't really say anything against him um, because he's doing it in honor, uh, love as Jesus, you know, uh, Yeshua, Stephen, uh, Paul, you know, 
they all did it in honor, uh, not cussing each other out, not uh, threatening, you know, don't use threatening words like vengeance is the Lord's. He will take care of them. We don't have to threaten them, you know, uh, and, and, and Jason, his, his, uh, the thing is not me, well, the Holy <laughs> Spirit through him. Right. Um, uh, of what I've seen so far, um, this is for real. Like, the, and, and even uh, I was reading in Ezekiel 7, 18 um, before we got on here. And, you know, usury, uh, uh, do not borrow or lend to ones. A just man does not borrow nor lend. Um, that means you, you give away and you get given to, you know, um, and oh man, no man, nothing. And everything you do, if you sign a contract with these policy enforcers, you automatically owe them something. It, it, it's uh, it's all commerce. Mm -hmm. It's all commerce. That that no go oh, cool? no okay. Me. Yeah, I know. I have a habit. I have a habit. Um, but the thing is, is that th this whole thing is commerce. It doesn't uh, it doesn't deviate from commerce. So even even getting pulled over. Um, you need to treat it like a like a business transaction because that's all it is. He's that that guy is all he's trying to do is extort extort money from you. He's trying he's an extortionist and he's trying to extort money from you, and that's it. And, and when you when you realize that, um, and, and you start to understand the power that you actually have, um, you know it really it really helps you have a. Um, a really firm grasp on the reality of the situation. You know, I, I know, you know, it's so easy, right? You see those lights behind you and it's immediately like, oh, you know, like, oh man, you know, this is it, right? I mean, that's always our first reaction. But the thing is, is like, no, we need to be bold. We need to be bold, not be intimidated by that man uh, at all because you don't have to be because you didn't do anything wrong. You know, mo more often than not. I mean, if you're drinking and driving or, you know, you, you I don't know, you know, if you, you know whether you did something wrong or not. If you just rolled a stop sign, whatever. If you just, you know, c cross a double yellow because somebody is going super, super slow and you did it totally safe, right? Safe and effectively, then, you know, whatever, whatever. It is what it is. You know, if you're only going like five miles away, 10 is a little bit much for me. I try not to do 10. You know, I don't want to invite it on me. You know what I mean? I try to stay in honor and everything that I do, um, you know, and and like Thompson, uh, Thompson versus, how do I get back to that uh, again? Share. Share. Boom. Share screen. Boom. Um, you want to go to window? Window. Boom. Boom. Share. Oh, share. Oh, now you got to push it. Boom. Oh. Okay. So like like it says right here, right on um, on on Thompson versus Smith, it says um, you know uh, it says and while conducting himself in an orderly and decent manner, neither interfering with nor disturbing another's rights. So we just want to make sure that we're doing that. You know, I would say honestly, I would say if you got caught going twenty miles over the speed limit, you better just take what you got. And don't sit here and argue with that uh, policy enforcer. If you, you know, if you were doing donuts and, you know, you ended up taking out somebody's mailbox, guess what, man? You took out somebody's mailbox. That's your bad. You need to fix that wrong. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, all right. So getting back to it. So the next thing that I do is I remind the officer of his oath, right? Because what I'm going to do because uh, it's all about contracts and it's all about, you know, it's all about um, uh, uh, business. So so I'm going to accept his oath. I'm letting the reason I have this on there is because I'm letting the officer know that I accept his oath. So each member of the Tennessee, this is Tennessee Highway Patrol. Um, you know, I just pull I just grab this from uh, the Tennessee codes. Um, but I need to actually I need there's a little bit of different uh what I learned in the last couple of days is there's a there's a difference between uh, highway patrol and then just your regular policy enforcers. So uh, high, highway patrol has a little bit more uh, leniency as to what what they can get away with, unfortunately. Um, but uh, but even yet, they still one thing they can't do is they can't violate your rights, uh, which they will do, and and then you can seek remedies if you need to. All right. 
each member of the we we'll just say policy enforcement because it is it, it is the same for everybody. Uh, each member of the Tennessee Highway Patrol, upon the members appointed and before entering upon the members' duties, shall swear and subscribe to the following oath. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of Tennessee. We we just we can just stop it right there. Every state has its own constitution. OK, and what you need to do is you need to read the Constitution for your state. They're all pretty much the same. But, um, you know, when you're when you're making a, a case for yourself, um, you know, you really want to you really want to cite the Constitution for your state because uh, you start citing the federal Constitution and they're going to tell you it's not a federal matter. And so they're just going to blow your argument out of the water and you're just done. You know what I mean? So uh, grab every state has a constitution. Grab your uh, your state's constitution and read it. Um, it. It's a good read. You'll find things that you'll be uh, uh, surprised about. So um, the one thing that I want to do, you know, is so right off the bat. So then what I do is I list. I don't list the whole constitution. I just list the finer points. And and the first one says that all power is inherent to the people. And all free governments are founded on their authority, meaning the people's authority, and instituted for peace, safety, and happiness. Uh, for the advancement of those ends, they have at all times an unalienable, right? Unalienable, it means my God-given rights, my God-given rights, um, which nobody can deny, right? Because I'm a child of heaven. I'm an ambassador of the kingdom of heaven. Right. I'm a priest, right? Uh, you know, I'm chosen. I'm a chosen royal priesthood uh, and indefeasible right to alter, reform or abolish the government in, in any such manner uh, they think pro uh, proper. Um, so uh, so all power is inherent in the people. This policy enforcer uh, swore an oath to the Constitution, the Tennessee Constitution. So I'm showing him that you you are a you are a servant of the people. And that all power is inherent to the people. Well, I'm the people. So guess what? You know, we're, we're going to have to have a conversation, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and uh, um, you know, I like this one. This is just, and the only reason I put this in here is, is to show, you know, the, the, the slavery. Uh, I want to show the policy enforcer the slavery that he's trying to impose upon me, right? Because section two says, the government being instituted for this common benefit uh, the doctrine of non-resistance against arbitrary power and oppression is absurd, slavish, and destructive of the good and happiness of mankind. So, it, so the doctrine of non-resistance. What does that mean? It means that if if I don't resist the tyrannical the the tyrannical uh, dog that is uh, trying to um, racketeer money out of me through intimidation right that that it would be it would be absurd for me not to go against this power it would be slavish it would be destructive of the good and happiness of mankind so dude you know i love you man and but you're trying to impede on my rights and i gotta let you know that i'm not gonna allow you to do that you know mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, so there's that. Um, and, and, and then, you know, uh, we, I just put this in here, um, cause you, you can take the, uh, the religious, uh, uh, aspect to it. Uh, I hate to say religious, but you can, you can take the, um, uh, you know, the believer aspect, right? Um, well, actually I call it the knower because it, you know, it's not something that I just believe. It's something I actually know that the Lord exists and he loves me and that I have a manifested relationship with him in my life. Um, he has my picture in his back pocket, by the way, y'all didn't know that. But anyways, um, uh, section three says that all men, ha men have a natural and infeasible right to worship the almighty God according to the dictates of their own conscience. That uh, okay. So the the reason I'm reading that is because, like I said, it's all about commerce. This is all this is is commerce. All everything is is a contractual agreement. Your driver's license, your uh, your your uh, registration. It's all a contractual agreement, right? And in the United States, we have the right to contract. 
OK, and the government can't impede on that contract. But if we have the right to contract, we also have a right to deny a contract. OK, well, I deny the contract because on the driver's license, it says that that I have to uh, jump through hoops and that I have to obey everything and that I got to obey the the uh, policy enforcer, no matter what he does to me, I have to obey him. And that's and that's consenting to their driver's license. That's 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 giving them the authority to do whatever they want to me. And then if I register my vehicle, what I've done is I've actually uh, leased uh, or, or actually what I've done is I've given my vehicle uh, to the government and then they, they leased it to me. So I got to make all the payments on it and everything. But what I did was I asked them permission to have it and to drive it. Does that even make sense? Because the thing is, is the, you know, my father gave me that vehicle. My father uh, gave my my van cost eight hundred dollars, and it, it's been driving for three years, and I I haven't done that much work to it. I probably paid about two grand in work in the last three years. It's a twenty. It's twenty years old though. So what do you expect? You know what I mean? But but the thing is, is that was a gift from my father. Why on earth would I take something that my father gave me? And then go down to the go down to the DMV and hand it over to the state and ask the state permission to drive it. That doesn't make any sense at all, right? And and so you know, so the thing is, and, and the other part of this, the the part where all the faith comes in, and that I have the right to worship Almighty God according to the dictates of my own conscience, is that it, Scripture says I was bought with a price, right? And, and we know that price, that price was, uh, that price was Yeshua, right? Jesus, right? So, and, and that was a heavy, that was a heavy price, right? So, but the thing is, is that if I was bought with a price, well, you can't buy or sell anything in this world without having a contract. So I already have a contract. I have a contract with, with my creator. And so why would I, why would I take that contract um, and make it null and void by getting into a contract with the beast. That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense at all. Um, so, okay. So, and then I have um, section seven here. Um, and it says that people shall be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and possessions from unreasonable searches and seizures. Um, and that general, uh, and, and that general warrants whereby an officer may be commanded to search suspected places without evidence of the fact committed or to seize any persons, uh, person or persons not named whose offenses are not particularly described and supported by evidence are dangerous to liberty and ought not be granted. Okay, so um, the thing is, is, you know, uh, people sh shall be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and possessions. Um, you know, the thing is, is that um, you're, so, so that vehicle that you have, that, that automobile, that's yours. Okay. And you have the right to be secure in that. Okay. And, and so, um, you know, they're, they're not supposed to be able to take it from you, but why can they, they can take it from you because you um, registered it with them. And so now it's their property. It's not your property. It's theirs. So it's not your possession anymore. See what I'm saying? So that's why it's really important that you hang on to your possession, right? And not hand it over to the state because if you do, well, then it's not your possession and they can take it. They can take it. Uh, un uh, unreasonable search uh, seizures. And that general uh, warrants whereby an officer may be commanded to search. Okay, so they need a warrant, right? Um, but but the thing is, is is to, to have a warrant, they have to have what's called RAS, which is reasonable, articulable uh, suspicion. Uh, they also need to have probable cause, you know. Um, but uh, a lot of folks don't know this. You yeah. Know. And like when a policy enforcer pulls us over, you know, uh, we're <laughs> just going to ask them, what's your ass? What's your you ass? Know, what's your ass? <laughs> you know, R-A-S. Yeah. Reasonable, articulable suspicion. Sus suspicion. And that is a mouthful. I'll tell yeah, it you, is. it is. <laughs> yeah. um, okay. So section eight, that no man shall be taken or imprisoned or deceased de uh, de of his freehold, liberties or privileges 
or outlawed or exiled or in any manner destroyed or deprived of his life, liberty or property, but by the judgment of his peers or the law of the land. OK, here we go with the law of the land again. Right. right. That's common law, oh, Co common law. Three things I can do. I can't harm you, uh, can't harm your property and I can't impede on your liberties. OK, um, you know, uh, so, you know, this is something that needs to be stand on because, you know, uh, I can tell you that, you, you know, I got taken to prison and and uh, but but I had. Um, but I had these rights and privileges. I didn't have them outlined very well. I was new at it. He gets taken to jail. Okay, jail, right. That, for Ashley, there's a difference between prison and jail because she's, she's such a felon. But for me, being that, you know, I, I, don't, I haven't really experienced that too much. Um, you know, it, it, prison and jail are all the same. I'm locked up. I can't get out. <laughs> so... <laughs> But um, yeah, totally cute. But um, all right, hold on. <laughs> um, so um, uh, deceased of his freehold. That's an interesting word. You know, I um, I probably need to look that up. But I would say that you, you know, one thing that that I've always been in understanding with with law <clears throat> is that my body is my property, right? It's the only thing I really, truly own. Everything else is given to me by the by the Lord as well. Um, but this one is is solely mine. This this earth suit, you know, is um, is my property as well. Um, uh, the next one is that no person arrested and confined in jail shall be treated with unnecessary rigor. Right. And I'll tell you what, when they brought me in. They were all rude. They were all dishonorable. They were all total jerks, like a hundred percent. And I, I acted in honor the whole time, you know. And, and this one guy even said, "Well, somebody for uh, somebody who's uh, not consenting um, is, is is sure uh, being uh, uh, agreeable." And I was like, "Yeah, because I'm going to honor you. You know, you might not honor me, but I'm going to honor you." You know, and I know lots of folks heard that in there and that was awesome. You know, it's a, you know, it's, it's showing who my father is and showing that, that, that I'm above this, you know, that, that you will not, you know, get me to, um, to come down to your level and start, you know, swearing and yelling and, and acting a fool. I won't do it. I won't do it. <clears throat> um, uh, let's just skip. Um, let's see. Um, uh, I have retrospective up in the Black's Law. Oh, well, it's okay because all I wanted to do was show that a uh, law impairing the obligation of contracts shall be made. So, again, this is this goes along what retro retrospective retrospective law um it's it's uh historical law okay law and history um <clears throat> but um so uh but anyways uh what i want to show is that this is the same this is the same in the constitution as well that uh that you know the government can't impede on on contracts or your obligation to contract uh why because we're all in commerce if you couldn't contract you can't make any money for them to take right you, you can't make any money for them to racketeer out of you. So, uh, yeah, they're not going to impede on contracts, but neither should they um, force you to sign a contract, right? Like, you know, if you if you're forced to sign a contract, well, well, you're you're under um, you're under duress. You're signing a contract under duress. Well, what does that make that contract? If you're under duress, what does it make it? It makes it void. Because it's not, you can't sign, you have to sign a contract willingly. When you sell your soul to the devil in a contract with your blood, you have to do it willingly. He can't force you. If he forces you, it's null and void. And you're going to heaven, maybe. But, all right. So, <laughs> uh, what do you got here? Um, oh, did I put this in? Uh -huh. um, or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. Boom. Right. Boom. Perfect. Right. First Corinthians six nineteen. That's right. 
So, you know, that so that goes right along with section three, right? That I have the right to, to worship my God um, as far as my good conscience. You know, so if you're trying to if you're trying to pull me out of a, of a contract with my father, well, we're going to have a problem, you know, um, and, and I really like Section 33. This is also in the U.S. Constitution. Uh, I believe it's 13 uh, um, in the Constitution um, that slavery and involuntary servitude, except as a punishment for crime, whereof the party shall have been duly convicted are forever forever prohibited in this state. So, you know, when they're telling us in Tennessee that we have to wear a mask, well, what are they doing? They're, they're, they're breaking their th the section 33 of the Tennessee constitution by telling us that we have to wear a mask because slavery and involuntary servitude is prohibited in this state forever. Right? So, if all these things, you know, oh, and also, also, we can add on the, the driver's license, the registration, all that stuff. We can add all that to it, right? If I don't want to do it, I don't have to do it. I don't have to. If you're making me do it, you, you're trying to put me in slavery, right? If I have to ask you for anything, if I have to ask the state for a fishing license, hunting license, gun license, uh, license to collect water, Anything, any license, anything that they're telling me that I have to get permission for, well, guess what that is? It's slavery, slavery, In and boundaries. it's forever prohibited in this state, but you have to know who you are. You have to know who you are. All right, so this last little part here, if all else fails, if this policy enforcer hangs out with me this entire time, goes through my entire sheet with me, <laughs> you know, which he would be amazing. I would have to applaud that man if he actually did that. I would, but but if he if he keeps cut if he keeps cutting me off, and he's not going to listen to me, well then I'm just going to jump right to the end here, right to the end. Tennessee Code Section Eight Nineteen One Hundred One: The official bonds of all state and county officers now require be by law to furnish official bonds shall be executed by such officials as principal and may be executed by some surety company authorized to do business in the state of Tennessee as surety. Okay. So what, uh, so, so, th so this makes this, this policy enforcer a bonded agent. Okay. So as a bonded agent, um, he, he is, he's protected uh, by the state of Tennessee against uh, all, all uh, uh, accusations being brought against him, any, any uh, uh, debts, fees that he should incur as an officer of the law, you know, they, they, they got them bonded. They're going to they're gonna take care of their babies, right? They're going to take care of their dogs, um, right? But here's the thing. So I'm letting him know that I know that you're a bonded agent. And so I'm going to, now I'm going to read him this next line. It's called a commercial lien. A commercial lien may be used by a citizen to collect a debt or to secure a promise service oath of a public official by seizing the property of the public official to secure privately or publicly the bond of the official when an immediate specific performance is required of an official instead of the general protection of the public. The instant process is called a distress or distress infinite which because it has no grace period before impoundment must be pre-bonded. Commercial lanes are not common law uh, liens. Uh, commercial leads are declarations of obligation under 15 USC. So basically in a nutshell, what this is saying is that if this bonded officer, um, if, if this bonded officer if he if he impedes on my on my rights, right? That that I now um, I, I can put a commercial lien against him uh, with criminal charges. And if I do that, if he has criminal atar charges attached to a commercial lien that you file with the sec uh, with the Secretary of State, um, he can't uh, he can't work until the the uh, lien is satisfied. 
right? And and it can take it can take time for that lean to be satisfied, like months. So uh, you know, so I, you know, I'm I, I'm gonna tell a guy, I'm gonna be like, look, I love you, man, uh, and I don't want to do this, but if you're gonna violate me right now, this is what's gonna happen. This is this is what I'm gonna do. I don't want to, but you know, I will I will seek remedy. If you take my property, if you uh, unlawfully search and seize my stuff, you know, and, and that's just it. Um, so uh, anyways, we do we have any questions about what we talked about so far? Anybody? We got three people. Why do you obey? Why do you obey? <laughs> <laughs> Um, he's got some of his uh, affidavit um, because uh, a lot of this stuff in here as well, you know, it is, hi, Ashley, yeah. um, Mary, uh, Mary Smith, Jody, Tina. I love y'all. I love y'all, y'all. And I know I'm probably missing one because I know she's in there somewhere. She's just listening in the background. Well, let me Maybe ask, not. Um, is, is anybody interested and seeing an example of an affidavit. I, let's talk about affidavits really quick. Um, so affidavits are uh, what lawyers call the paper darts of um, of uh, uh, of the of the courthouse. And why is that? Well, because an affidavit, um, unrebutted, an unrebutted affidavit uh, under the fifth maximum of law uh, stands as truth. In the court of law, and uh, an unrebutted affidavit under the sixth maximum of law stands as the judgment, right? So what I like to do is I try to uh, I try to write my um, my uh, the judgment into my affidavits. So basically, I'm just prompting. Uh, uh, he's not a judge. He's only a clerk. Okay. He's not. He's a, he's he's not, even the judge is fake. Even the judge is an illusion. He's not even a judge. We haven't had a judge since like 1871 or something like that. He's an illusion. Oh, no, that's not what I need. I was, uh, oh, my bad. Oh, well, uh, well, let's do this real quick. Let's do this. What is an affidavit? It's a written or printed declaration of statement of facts made voluntarily and confirmed by oath or affirmation of the party making it taken um, before an officer having authority to administer such oath. Okay, so, but the thing is, is an affidavit, you can bring it back to us. Okay. Oh. I got you. An affidavit has so much power, so much power, um, because what you do is like, say you get, you know, whatever, whatever, if it's a, if it's a, if it's a, uh, 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 a traffic violation or, um, or I don't know, I, you know, you got accused of something, whatever. Um, you know, you, uh, well, let's just do traffic violation are the easiest ones. So, um, because it's just kangaroo court anyways. But, um, so, uh, the second you get your ticket, uh, you come home and you start doing your affidavit. Now I have, I have templates that I use because I've, I've filed before. So now I can just, uh, you know, change the officer's name and, change a couple of the circumstances or whatever. Not that I get pulled over all the time or anything like that, but I did like, like one month, I just got pulled over a lot. Um, but, uh, um, but, uh, uh, what was I going? Uh, so, so, um, but, but an affidavit. You just tell your testimony of when you got pulled over. It'd be so much easier. Well, but but that's different because okay, an actual affidavit. I didn't right, right. So, but what you want to do is you want to you want to file your affidavit like the next day, right? Because the longer it goes um, unrebutted, uh, the more standing you have in the court. Um, you know, uh, ten days is sufficient, you know, before your court date. But it's really good to get it get it in the clerk's office as soon as you can. You know, um, and don't let them charge you a filing fee or anything like that. There's no administrative cost. You already did all the admin on there. So there's no reason for them to do anything. But but uh, um, but put us put their stamp on each page. 
Now, however long your affidavit is, you want to put a stamp on each page because I'm telling you, they will lose pages. If you don't have a stamp on every page, they will intentionally tear it apart and lose pages. So, uh, you know, and you want a copy uh, of that, uh, um, uh, of the affidavit be, uh, being stamped on each page. And you want to have a complete copy for yourself as well. Um, but anyways, um, so, you know, you file an affidavit, uh, fifth maximum law stands as truth, sixth maximum law stands as the judgment. So when you go into the courtroom, there's no, you, you don't even have to say anything because the judge has your affidavit, you know, uh, you, you know, um, you don't, you don't have to answer any questions. Uh, you don't have to self-incriminate or anything like that. The affidavit's gone unrebutted. All you have to do is say, you have my affidavit. It's gone un un unrebutted and it stands as truth and it's a judgment. Am I free to go? And that's it. We're going to put the affidavit up. Um, all right. Let's, let's put an affidavit up so we can show you. Um, do the affidavit of fact. Because there are going to be ones that get to watch this after. Right, right there. No, 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 no. no. Affidavit of fact. Oh, okay. there you go. Boom. Oh. So this is a simple, simple affidavit. It's affidavit of fact. This was uh, obviously for the White Bluff Munici Municipal Court. Um, now, look, you want to put you want when you write your name, like, look how I did it. See, it's got Jason Jeffrey. And then I got a little colon there. That's the House of Hicks. OK, and, and that's how you want to write that out. Jason Jeffrey, the House of Hicks. Right. Um, and then over here, you want to put your you want to put your citation number. You want to put your case number, um, you know, and look, they, they they're going to say that you're summons. Right. But a summons can only have you can only summon demons and ghosts. Right. And you're not a demon or a ghost, right? There's another part of that beast system again, that dead system, always, always trying to, uh, always trying to uh, uh, force that that death on on ones. Well, um, so, uh, you know, so I got my little, you know, right off the bat, I got my little uh, my statement, right? My statement about myself. I'm letting them know who I am. I, Jason Jeffrey of the House of Hicks, a man of the creation of I don't know what happened to that little guy. My Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I am over the age of consent, am of sound mind, and have personal knowledge of the matter stated herein. I have created this affidavit to establish the true facts of this matter because this matter lacks the standard of regularity, right? Because it all it's always going to lack the standard of regularity because they're always trying to racketeer you. They're always trying to make you into the straw man, and you're not. I declare under the penalty of perjury and under the laws of the United States of America that I will testify in open court that the facts stated herein are truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me, Jesus. All right. Um, so uh, right off the bat, the first thing I do is I reserve, all, I reserve my rights, right? I'm letting them know who I am, and I'm reserving all my rights under UCC 1-308, oh. okay? Okay. Um, and then, uh, and then I let them know. I let them know exactly who they are. Uh, we, the people, as secured parties, are now under hardship by the Bar Association, right? That Temple Bar out of London, as to the legal disabilities uh, due to discrimination and violation under their color of law. I have been informed that this violation under their color of law violates Criminal Code 18 U.S. Uh, uh, C. Uh, section 241, uh, conspiracy against rights, 242, deprivation of rights under color of law. I showed you guys all this in my little uh, note to the policy enforcer, my love letter to the policy enforcer, uh, is also actionable as uh, Title 42 USC uh, Section 1983, civil action for deprivation of rights and meets the elements of a racketeer influenced and corrupt organizations act. Boom. Okay. So then look, I did my little colorable. I let them know what colorable meant. Right. And we, we, we went over that before. Um, and, and then I just start stating the facts upon being pulled over by uh, J.M. McGee uh, on the, on the day of October 23rd, your hireling could not produce a witness, a claim or an injured party. 
and as such administered commercial law to a not for hire private conveyance vehicle right because i'm not automobile because i'm not i'm not operating in the public i'm operating in the private that's my private conveyance vehicle to take my uh possessions from one place to another um and then furthermore officer mcgee and i love this one is unable to prove mens rea mens rea means the, uh, uh that i had intent that i had intended to do something wrong right which i did not i did not i was simply uh this particular one was um traveling uh, uh five miles over the speed limit in a school zone however i was just following the vehicles in front of me that's all i was doing and i, and I saw that the policy enforcer is parked in the middle of the street with his lights on okay so anyways um uh, this is just about personal liberties, um, you know, and all that. Um, and I, and then I say, and this is where I say it in, in section, in section seven, I say, furthermore, Officer McGee was parked in the middle of the road with all his trooper lights flashing. It's incomprehensible that one would not slow down, which I very much did. I was simply following the pace of the car in front of me as I have a witness who will testify, Right. And then I just remind them again that I'm reserving all my rights under UCC 1-308 and that UCC 1-301 must be in harmony with common law, right? So I'm letting them know that once I reserve my rights, that it, it is the, uh, it, it is the um, responsibility of the clerk who is acting like a judge to, uh, to, to now... Uh, uh, be in harmony with common law, right? And I said, where's the in injured party? I'm protected yet again by 18 U.S. Code 242. Um, uh, anyways, um, the oh, and then I let them know this is this is actually the fifth. Um, this is the uh, fifth maximum law. Uh, and I'm just letting them know the failure to rebut the affidavit of fact means that the persons doing business as the state of Tennessee have tactically agreed and acquiesced to all facts that were set forth in the affidavit of fact and renders this claim and all others made by them a nuality, right? So acquiesced. Acquiesced. It just means that that um, that if they don't rebut it, if they don't take the time to rebut it, that um, that they 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 have left the battlefield. Okay. That they they concede right. uh, to to the battle, um, and then you know I just declared under uh, Persia of law of the United States foregoing is correct. Um, boom. You know, and you want to write this out like this: second day of the tenth month in the year of our Lord and Savior, uh, two thousand twenty. Um, and then I sign it, and then I have a witness sign it, and I get it notarized. I get it notarized at the bank or whatever. Um, you know, which now is actually having which, which, complications, <laughs> which now is becoming a problem <laughs> because we have uh cut our license Oops. up and uh we we no longer, um, you know, being that we're in Tennessee, but it didn't matter, it don't matter what state you're in, we have cut the we are no longer of the, the fictional corporation uh we we do not work for um the united states and and we don't have to have their license their contracts anything we don't have to have anything of theirs any longer um and, and so uh being that uh we have went and tried to get a uh western union and uh i couldn't do that <laughs> they wouldn't take my little um license there uh that it's just a picture and it has my my name on it um uh ashley atkinson and uh because jason we, atkinson we both changed our uh you know names to to his uh dad's uh dad's last name my father's original last name before he was adopted yeah right yeah so um that is what we've done and uh, we're taking a stand on it, but uh, now we need to go get um, no. uh, my affidavit. Oh, right. and uh, we're we want to get um, uh, well, we we ain't quite figured well, because, that out yet. Well, what I did was I did a um, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to talk over you. I did it again, I did it again. How do I get to my um, affidavit of rescission so oh. we can show them that real quick? Um, so um, you know, 
Right. So, so, so we're, we're, we've, we've kind of like, we're hitting a crossroads where we're seeing that, um, you know, that actually coming out of Babylon um, is, uh, is, is that on the screen now? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Cause I want to, well, well, I just want to go back to us for a minute. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, so we are, uh, we're coming to a crossroads where we're, you know, we're really, really trying to get out of Babylon, like in a serious way. Um, but the thing is, is that, you know, now we don't have uh, an I identification that uh, ones will uh, accept as legitimate identification. Um, you know, we were trying to get, uh, so I'm gonna show you my affidavit of rescission in a minute. And I was trying to get Ashley's affidavit under her uh, slave name, Alexander. Um, I was trying to get that um, uh, uh, affidavit of rescission in, and I'll explain what it is in a minute. Um, and, but the thing is you have to have an ID, you have to have an ID uh, in order to have it notarized because it all, all yeah. affidavits you have to have notarized. And we went in there and we're like, we got the birth. We, we both have our birth certificate. We did. We brought know? our birth certificate. Uh, and know? it was so funny that, uh, the lady in there, she was interested in what we had to say, which was hilarious. Like we never get that. So we know it was the Holy spirit. Um, but so we're, I, I'm using her piece of paper and I'm writing our information down, you know? So, so she just gets introduced to us as, uh, you know, Jason Hicks and Ashley Alexander. And then, uh, I give her my face. Facebook, which is Paige Redman, um, and then and then um, my affidavit is is Ashley Atkinson. You know, so like she has all these aliases, right? My little felon, Jace. my little felon. <laughs> we we just got these. Uh, uh, yeah, we're we're just man trying to get out of that corporate uh, that fiction, man. Right. You know, and the other thing too is you know, like for any of you guys that are deciding to do this. Um, I mean, you can, you can operate your straw man, you know, you can, I mean, I wouldn't get, uh, I wouldn't get the driver's license. Um, but you can, you can get, um, what's called a non-citizen passport. Um, but you still, you need two forms of ID to do that. Like, you know, uh, state ID or, um, and, and your birth certificate or something like that. I wouldn't use your social security number for anything. Um, but uh, the, the problem is like, because we were going to go get our state IDs. And, and the problem is, is that, well, if we get our state IDs, well, well we're only, we're only, you know, submitting to the right. state again, man. Right. And not only that, now we're making a declaration of, of, of where we live, like our residency. And the thing is, is that, that we're, we're ambassadors of, uh, of the kingdom of heaven. So we don't have any place that's our permanent residency because right. we don't know what the Lord's going to have. So as far as I'm concerned, we're only visiting the state of Tennessee. Right. We don't, right. you know, right now, I mean, yeah, we're, we're here right now, but I mean, we could be gone tomorrow. We don't know. So how can I claim residency anywhere um, if if I'm going to be gone tomorrow? And, and I could be very easily, I don't you know, um, yeah, with it at all. Right. And the thing is, and, and that's also my defense with the policy enforcers. So if I have a state ID in, on me, well, now I'm, I'm blowing my defense out of the water. Right. I just think even trying to give them an ID at all, you know, Jason's like, we should do it in honor. And I'm like, look, they don't have to know anything about me. It tell, The Constitution tells me I don't have to show them a thing. So why should I even have any kind of, uh, you know, picture? But he's like, you know, to do it in honor. So so Ashley Atkinson, it is. But, right. uh, but, but, but our identifications are through a ministry. It's ridiculous. So, um, so we're on the ministry website, um, you know, uh, as for identification purposes. And, you know, and the thing is, is like when I, when I give it to him, he's, you know, obviously he's going to be like, well, this isn't, you know, this isn't a valid ID or whatever. But, but the thing is, I'm doing it for your courtesy. I don't have to tell you anything about me. I didn't, I didn't commit a crime. If I commit a crime, I understand, you know, I, I'll be liable for that. I will take responsibility. But, you know, if I didn't commit a crime and you're just, you know, uh, picking at me for something, which it would be too, because I'm going to be in honor all the time. So, um, you know, uh, uh, if you're just picking at me for something, you, you can go on your way. I don't, I don't require your services, sir. You know, you try that one, see, see where that gets you. <laughs> 
but um but anyways um so uh yeah so if you're if you're wanting to do that you know if any of you are you want to do this know that you are totally getting into a battle like it, it it will be a battle uh until you get yourself uh situated right why not suffer the right persecution why right. not suffer for the right things right. you know yeshua didn't back down on this stuff um and, and uh paul didn't um, Stephen didn't, they didn't back down from this, you know, uh, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, they didn't back down, you know, uh, from, from, they knew their rights, you know, uh, and, and Ezekiel 18, you know, uh, it, it describes to us what a just man is, you know, and, and um, this, what they're doing, the Lord says in there that, uh, that they despise his oaths. They despise his oaths, right. you know, and, and his words, um, his truth. And we live in freedom if we go by his words. And, and they, he didn't he didn't bow down to these government ways, as we're told that he did, you know, obey no. the laws of the land. It's not the laws of the land. It's maritime water, sea right. law that they have us under. Right. They have us under know? under uh, the law, of the law of the sea and not the law of the land. Right. That, that is correct. So, you know, because ones do come up against us and say, you know, uh, well, we're supposed to obey the laws of the land. And, you know, and I love them. You know, I'm sorry I did the voice just now. I did a voice. But, um, you know, but the thing is, is that is that they just don't know. They don't understand that these are the laws of the sea. Um, you know, that's why that's why when, uh, uh, you know, uh, when your business is going down, you're in deep water. Right. And you have to be bailed out. And, uh, you know, and there's so much more. That's why they're called banks, right? Because of the banks of the river. And what do the banks of the river do? They, they control the current, see, right? So, you know, all of it, all of it, all of it's water, all of it's um, uh, maritime law. And, um, and that's what they're trying to rule us under. Right. Um, there was something else that I wanted to. Um, Affidavit No, I, oh, yeah, I oh, got that. Bad. I got that. My bad. Um, I'm ready. <laughs> Um, no, there's something else I want to talk about real quick. It was just, um, oh shoot. I can't remember. All right. Affidavit of rescission. So I'll get back to it. I'll remember it, but let's go to the affidavit of rescission and I'll show you what I've done. Um, you know, the, the these things that I've done are, are just minor things. They're, they're just, um, you know, this is how I started. This is how I started learning was, uh, creating affidavits and as I'm creating the affidavits and going through it, you know, um, you know, I'm learning. I'm learning how to operate in this beast system and declare my rights. Because the thing is, is that everything um, is, a, you know, is a presumption 